So hello and welcome to, I've lost count how many updates now, four or five I think. Um, ah, four, my helpful glamorous assistant tells me. So as you can see, quite a lot done. We've started on the hills. Uh, this was the new technique I wanted to try. The more observant of you will notice Stonehenge there that came off Roseland's Hill, our last exhibition layout. Um, we will do a, a, a little video sometime how we made that. So I'm just going to do a quick um, show you how we did the hills and then a little bit of an update. Doug's showing the back of it which doesn't look so good. So basically what I've done here is I've used ballast mat. So I've got two types here. This is the cheap paperback stuff from the Far East and this is the decent sort of card back Javis. Now actually although you can't see from here that hill was done with the cheap mat and that hill was done with an expensive, more expensive Javis as is the front. This is too stiff you have to wet it quite a lot to bend it on such a steep hill. It might be all right in a shallower one. So I'm not actually gonna persevere with that. I'm gonna use this cheaper stuff um, because this actually works much better. Um, so I'm gonna take you over the other side and just show you briefly how we, did, how we do the hill. Um, and then we'll show you a few more updates. I've got my hill shape here. And what we need to do is get a template. And all you've gotta do is get yourself um, a bit of card, and a pen, draw around the bottom here and round the back and you'll end up with one of these which is a template. So this is a template for the piece that I need to do the hill. And then obviously what we're going to do now is then cut that out of this. A little tip here so that you don't get it the wrong way up which we've done loads of times, just right top and then the top obviously needs to go that way up. So quite simple, um, it's actually a bit like what's in the shoe trade is called clicking, which is the skill of getting the most shapes out of a piece of leather. And it comes from the term where they used to use manual clippers, like sheep clippers, which made a clicking noise. So even though now it's done by very large stamping machines, it's still known as clicking. There you go, a little bit of useless information. This doesn't need to be too exact. As you know, anything we do is never that exact. Um, I've also got, and I'm going to experiment when I've got a bit of time, some green felt. And I think you could use ordinary green felt to do this when you see what the second stage is. So this is a um, PVA that we get from um, Screwfix because it's cheap. Uh, we've actually got a couple of these big tubs because you do tend to use a lot of PVA when we do our model railway scenery. So at the edges there, and obviously what I don't want to do is go too near the track because I don't want to lose my... And what I'm trying here, last time was I put a cover of newspaper, uh, but I'm not really sure given with what we're doing that we need it. So this way I'm just trying to missing a stage out and putting it straight onto my structural screwed up newspaper because I think that will work quite well. And then we're just going to get our piece of mat, we're going to wipe the glue off our microphone cable. And push it in there, like that. Now what I found before is you need some weights, oh, we've got a bit of escaping paper there, just to hold it in place while we stick the rest down. And then what I've also found I can use, uh, you may have seen me use this before, this is um, lead from roofing companies and I wanted it originally for doing uh, wagon weights and I remember my dear old dad telling me that that's where he got his lead from. And sure enough, I went in a roofing place, asked them nicely, um, and I got off cuts of roofing lead uh, for free. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna hold all this down, and then when that's dry, we'll trim it to shape. Um, but as you can see, you get the idea, in sort of minutes flat, there's my grass hill. Now when I did this the first time, I wasn't completely happy um, 
with the, the look of the grass and I'll take you over the other side and show that. So we're going to let that dry and then obviously what we'll do then is we'll stick the back down but for the moment that's not quite so crucial. So what we ended up with is obviously the green's very green and I wasn't, it's a bit papery in the watermarks. So what I decided to try was something that I read, um, actually somebody in Continental Modeler, and what I've done, and you can see these on these, is then put static grass on top of it. So this will just take a little while. So there we go. Now, what I'm gonna use is the plastic bottle shaker method that you've seen us use before. Now, slight problem is that I can't find mine. So what I've done is I've got here is just a plastic bottle. This happens to be a Sprite one, uh, which is the same difference. And I've just uh, knocked some holes in the top there. And this works just as well, bizarrely, and obviously doesn't cost anything. So I've just knocked a few holes in the top. So we need to give it a good shake. But what I want to do just before we do that, is I'm just gonna put that down just to protect my track a little bit. You have to give it a good shake uh, to get the static to build up. Um, I know, please don't waste your time doing, we've had lots of very helpful comments from people telling me, why don't I go and buy a cheap fly swatter and make my own with a T-sieve? We've seen that one quite a lot. Um, basically, because even on a proper um, static grass applicator, I managed to give myself electric shocks. So I'm actually much happier doing it this way. And as you can see, that works every bit as well. <laughs> As the bottle that costs about five quid. Um, now this stuff comes from Hobby King if anybody wants to know you'll find their website and we found them by far the cheapest supplier of um, static grass so have a look we have done videos on their products before uh, but take a look at their website um, very cheap suppliers of all this So, I suppose that should really have been a tutorial Tuesday, but it's a little update. And I, I did take on board, as I say, Cheryl and a few others saying, can we see how you actually do things? So rather than just say, there you go, I've done hills this week. Um, has made a mess of my track, but it's all loose. It'll hoover or blow off. So just very quickly then, I'll just show you a couple of other quick things we've done this week. So. We've been busy with buildings. I finally used my one pound super quick good shed that I got new at the Bluebell show one year. I've added some different steps because I don't like the silly ra uh, ramp they put on it. But I'm like, quite pleased with that. It fits exactly, cost me a pound. This cost me two pound, which was uh, the super quick water tower. And I've converted it into a little engine shed with its own integral water tank, added an office that I had put some doors on. Um, the doors and came from leftovers from, from 3DK kits. And I'm quite pleased with that as a little engine shed. And then I'm also very pleased, I really got into the idea of these little private sidings of little warehouses that they had in the country. So this is my little warehouse. Now that's simply been made, it's a cardboard box. That's all it is. Mountain card and cereal packet, brick paper, and a load of posters off a 3DK kit. Add some gutters out of black paper. The doors came from a 3DK kit. Took me an evening's work um, and has basically cost me pence. Uh, and it's made to, made to measure. And I'm quite chuffed with that. It's gonna look great there. So it's all really coming along. Uh, we've got our hills going. You've got my gates now for my level crossing. We've got the key buildings. Um, and we're starting on our hills. So quite a lot going on. Um, I didn't want it to be a long build, it will take quite a while because it's quite a bit of detail work still to do, um, but it's coming along. We've got the buildings now and we've got the hills. So thank you for watching as always. Thank you for the big increase in subscribers. Um, don't forget the Christmas giveaway as always. And uh, we're toying with doing a 15,000 subscribers live stream over the Christmas holiday. Even if we don't quite make 15,000, I'd, I'd like to think we will. Uh, best way is subscribe. Um, we'll probably do a little live stream because they're quite good fun. So think of some questions you'd like to ask. Um, bung us some questions in um, through the BMR newsletter uh, email that um, goes on our website. And the, the interesting questions we'll answer as part of the live stream sometime over Christmas. So much going on at the moment. We've got 3D printing coming along with new models. This layout, videos, live stream, 
It's a good job I'm retired. Um, anyway, thank you as always for watching. We really appreciate all the comments and all the input and there'll be another update next Friday. Uh, if anything, we've got also, we've got a, a couple of new locos to review. So we've got some loco reviews to do as well. So as always, thank you for watching and we'll speak to you again soon. Hi, thanks for watching the video and for the nice comments. Uh, click on the left for a previous video in this series. Click on the right for another video you might enjoy. And please don't forget to click to subscribe, like, comment, etc. Thanks again.